Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, book titled Peshawar Nights, episode 1, page 1. Sultan al-Wa'idin Shirazi, an eminent scholar of Iran, visited India in 1927 AD, 1345 AH, when he was 30 years old. He was given a rousing reception everywhere he went. People benefited from his knowledge of tradition, history, and commentary on the Holy Quran. He was persuaded to enter into a religious debate on 23rd of Rajab, 1345 AH, with people of another belief in Peshawar, in what was then India and is today Pakistan. The discussion took place on 10 successive nights. The two principal participants from the opposite side were renowned scholars Kabul, Hafiz Muhammad Rashid and Sheikh Abdul Salam. Four reporters recorded the discussions in the presence of approximately 200 people, Shia and Sunni Muslims. Local newspapers published these accounts each following morning. Sultan al Wa'idin Shirazi compiled the newspaper accounts of the discussions in a book in Persian, published in Tehran, as Shabuhaya Peshawar, or Peshawar Nights. The first session, Thursday night, 23rd Rajab, 1345 AH. Hafiz, we are very pleased to have this opportunity to discuss the basic points on which we differ we should first decide how we should proceed. Sultan al I am willing to participate in discussions on the condition that we cast aside all preconceived ideas and discuss matters reasonably like brothers. Hafiz, I may also be permitted to take one condition, that our discussions should be based on the injunctions of the Holy Quran. Sultan al Wa'ilin, this condition is not acceptable since the Holy Quran is so concise that its deep significance must be interpreted through reference to other facts and hadith. Hafiz, right, this is sensible, but it's also necessary that reference be made to hadith and events that are based on indisputable evidence. We should refrain from referring to doubtful sources. Sultan al Wa'izin agreed, for a man like me, who is proud enough to claim relationship with the Prophet, it's not fair to go against the examples set forth by my ancestor, the Prophet of Islam. He has been addressed in the Holy Quran as follows, and most surely you conform yourself to sublime morality. It's also unupcoming to act against the injunctions of the Holy Quran, which says, Call to the way of your Lord with wisdom and godly exhortation, and have disputations with them in the best manner. Quran, chapter 16, verse 125. Relationship with the Holy Prophet. Hafiz, excuse me, you refer to yourself with the Holy Prophet. It is commonly known, but I ask that you let me know your genealogy so that I may know how your ancestral line reaches the Prophet. Sultan al Wa'ilin, my ancestral line reaches the Prophet through Imam Musa Kalim as follows. Muhammad, son of Ali Akbar, Ashraf al Wa'ilin, son of Ismail, Mushtaba Wazn, son of Ibrahim, son of Saleh, son of Abi Ali Muhammad, son of Ali, known as Mardan, son of Abi Qasim Muhammad Taqi, son of Muqbiluddin Hussein, son of Abi Ali Hassan, son of Muhammad bin Fathullah, son of Ishaq, son of Hashim, son of Abi Muhammad, son of Ibrahim, son of Abi Fityan, son of Abdullah, son of Hassan, son of Ahmad Abu Tayyib, son of Ali, Hassan, son of Abi Ja'far Muhammad, Al-Hayri, Nazilu Kirman, son of Ibrahim, 
al zarir known as Mujab, son of Amir Muhammad al-Abid, son of Imam Musa al kadhim son of Imam Muhammad Baqir, son of Imam Ali Zain al-Abidin, son of Imam Hussein, son of the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon them all. Hafiz, this line of descendant reaches the commander of the faithful, Ali, may Allah bless him. Although you have said that it ends with the Holy Prophet, in fact, with this genealogy, you should call yourself among the relations of the Holy Prophet and not among his direct descendants. A descendant is one who is directly linked with the Prophet. Sultan al Wa'izin, our ancestral line reaches the Prophet through Bibi Fatima Zahra, the mother of Imam Hussein. I don't understand why you insist so much on this point. Hafiz, I think I am misunderstood. It's my point of view that descendant is recognized from the male side only. I quote an Arabic couplet. My sons, grandsons, and daughters are from me, but my daughter's sons are not from me. If you can prove otherwise, please do so. Sultan al Wa'azin, there is a strong evidence, both from Holy Quran and from authentic hadith, to establish your point. Hafiz, please relate it so that we may understand. Sultan al Wa'azin, while you were speaking just now, I recalled a discussion between Harun al Rashid, the Abbasid Caliph, and our Imam Musa al Kadhim on this topic. The Imam gave such a convincing reply that the Caliph himself accepted it. Hafiz, I would like to hear about that discussion. Sultan al Wa'azin, Abu Ja'far Muhammad bin Ali, entitled Shaykh al Saduq, in the 4th century AH, in his Uyun Akhbar al Rida, or Major Sources for Riza, and Abu Mansur bin Ali Tabrasi, in his Ihtijaj, or namely supports, give a detailed account of the conversation that took place between Harun al-Rashid and Imam Musa bin Ja'far in the Caliph's court. The Caliph asked the Imam, how can you claim that you are a descendant of the Holy Prophet? The Prophet Muhammad had no descendant. It's acknowledged that descendants are from the male side and not from the female side. You belong to the generation of his daughter. The Imam recited verses 84 85 from chapter 6 of the Holy Quran, which read, And we gave to him Isaac and Jacob, each did we guide, and Noah did we guide before, and of his descendants David and Solomon and Job and Joseph and Aaron. And thus we do reward those who do good, and Zachariah and John and Jesus and Elias, everyone was of the good. Quran Chapter 6, verses 84, 85. The Imam asked the Caliph, Who was Jesus' father? Harun replied that Jesus had no father. The Imam said, There was no one, and yet Allah Almighty included Jesus in the progeny of the prophets through Mary. Similarly, He has included us in the progeny of the Holy Prophet through our ancestor Bibi Fatima. Moreover, Imam Farqad al-Din Razi, in his Tafsir al-Akbar, or namely Great Commentary, Book 4, page 124, Problem 5, says regarding this verse, that the verse proves that Hassan and Hussein are the descendants of the Prophet of Islam. Since in this verse God has verified Jesus as a descendant of Abraham, and Jesus had no father, this relationship informed the side of the mother. In the same manner, Hassan and Hussein are truly the descendants of the Prophet. Imam Musa al kalam asked Harun, if you wanted further proof, the Caliph asked the Imam to continue. The Imam read verse 60 from chapter 3, Al-Imran of the Holy Quran, which reads, But whoever disputes with you in this matter, after what has come to you of knowledge, then say, Come, let us call our sons and your sons, 
and our women and your women, and ourselves and yourselves, then let us be earnest in prayer and pray for the curse of Allah on the liars. Quran chapter 3, verse 6 to 1. He continued saying that no one has ever claimed that on the occasion of this spiritual contest, or namely Mubahala, against the Christians of Najran, that the Prophet took with him anyone except Ali bin Abi Talib, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein. It follows, therefore, that selves and fusuna means Ali bin Abi Talib, women, nisauna, means Fatima, and sons, abnauna, means Hassan and Hussein, whom Allah has identified as the Prophet's own sons. Upon hearing this argument, Harun the Caliph exclaimed, O oh, bravo, O oh, Abu Hassan, clearly this reasoning proves that Hassan and Hussein are the sons of the Prophet and that the Sadat Fatima, descendants of Bibi Fatima, are of the progeny of the Holy Prophet.